Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. Before I get started in today's video, I really want to thank everyone for all their wonderful comments and input on Wednesday's video. It really does help an awful lot when it comes to planning uh, future videos and the kinds of material you guys would like to see, and like I said, I just really and truly do appreciate it. And that actually is part of the reason for today's video. The other part is, I've always wanted to improve on the design of that multiple chamber box filter I built a little while ago. Uh, since I built that, I have uh, done a few other things for other filters, and some of that I really liked, and I think it would really improve that other design. So that is this here. Now, one of the things you'll notice in this video is, uh, you're not going to get to watch me putting it together. If there is enough interest in the fabrication of this filter, uh, just leave comments below and I will uh, do a quick video on how to put it together. But it is mostly its function and also I needed to get it up and running as quickly as possible. And whenever I record and uh, show all that, all the steps involved in making it, it just takes an awful lot longer. And I want to get this into an aquarium as quickly as possible because I wanted to do a test for it. And that test is, of course, because of, again, uh, Wednesday's video, on an ammonia test. And the tie-in to this filter comes from way back in the early days when I first started working in pet stores. We were always told, whenever we sold a filter, especially to someone who was just starting up a new aquarium, to make sure that they bought also the carbon inserts for it. The logic that we were given, and the logic I passed on to them, was that the carbon would smooth out those spikes, uh, the peaks of ammonia and nitrite, and make it a, a smoother process and therefore give the fish a greater chance of survival and making it through the whole cycling process. I am not sure what they tell you these days, but that was what we are told then, and that is the reason for part of this build. In the long run, I have a different use for that second chamber, but in this particular case, I am going to fill it with a really good quality carbon and then I am going to put it in the same aquarium I've been using all along for these ammonia tests. I am going to dose that tank with ammonia and then I'm going to start taking uh, ammonia readings and see if <laughs> any of that is even remotely true. And in the comments below before you get any further in this video let me know what you think is going to happen. Do you think that uh, this filter is going to smooth out those things. So is it going to end up being less ammonia over the first couple of days after I do the dosing? And now keep in mind that the media that's going to go in this besides uh, that uh, carbon is all going to be clean and new, uh, so it's not going to be seeded with any of that. So let me know what you think below. I'd be very interested in your opinion on this. The other thing I want to talk about before we get to the results of this are these guys. If you remember uh, about four or five days ago I had clean this tank out a little bit, got rid of the fish that were in there, uh, did a little bit of a clean and uh, obviously disturbed a fair amount doing that. And then I got a step for these guys. And also I had put a heater in there and changed the temperature. And sometimes when you do those sorts of things, and especially when you add uh, new fish, these ones are a little bit bigger than the ones that were in there. And I am feeding them a little bit more to uh, get them ready for breeding again. Uh, you end up with a little bit of an ammonia spike and that's what happened. I noticed that they were not behaving perfectly the way they normally do uh, so I did because I had the test kit uh, I did a test on it and you can see there's a little bit of ammonia there. Normally when that sort of thing pops up all they do is a reasonable water change and then it's pretty much more than enough to take care of it and I did that actually in this tank. I did the water change and took a reading again the next day and it was zero so uh, it is easy to deal with, but again, that's not the parameters for this experiment. This experiment is all about seeing how filters themselves can handle uh, those sorts of spikes. So let's get on to how I'm going to set this up and see what kind of results we're going to get. And as I said earlier, I really did want to improve on my original design for this style of filter. I find box filters are really useful, and a multi-chamber one is even more so. And the, my original design was not as easy to maintain as I like. And I'm lazy. <laughs> I want my things to be easy to work with, easy to clean, and therefore I'll you know do what I need to do for them. So hopefully I've managed to improve that. And the main step for that is these here. These rings uh, are attached to each of the chambers. 
so that I can pull each out. Now this one here is going to be probably not removed that often, but it is standalone, it is all together, and I can fill that with biomedia, uh, in this case it's going to be lava rock and a bit of gravel, and once that's inserted it uh, will most likely stay in put for quite some time. But the next two chambers uh, are a different story. This one here is the one that's going to have, in this case, carbon, but in other cases it's going to be other things, and it needs to be easily removed so I can uh, put in new materials for that, or in the case of I decide I just want to use it as a regular filter, uh, just fill it with full of biomedia. And that needs to, like I said, that needs to come out quite easily. And this is a mechanical filter, and it again needs to be removed, and as you can see, this is much simpler in design. It's much simpler to take apart, clean, and do the things you need to do, and that is really important. <laughs> and speaking of making things easier, there's one other thing I want to cover before uh, we get to loading this thing up and putting it in the aquarium, and that is a step I'm doing now when it comes to manufacturing these things. I'm using almost exclusively now acrylic plates for all the trays, and to drill all the holes individually would just take way too long. So as you can see here, I've stacked all the trays and the lid, and I'm gonna drill them all at once, and this makes it so much simpler. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to drill the holes and put another five uh, plus a little bit to uh, get them clamped in place. And again, that makes it so much simpler and cuts down an awful lot of time in putting this together because that is an awful lot of holes. And that time saved allows me to uh, do more experimentation. And in this particular case, it allows me to get this in the aquarium quick enough that I would be able to give you some results for today, which is also very important. Now I'm going to let this run for a little bit longer because I want to, to be comparable to uh, all the other filters. Uh, but I do have at least some initial readings for you guys. And pretty much all that's left here now is to get this thing uh, filled up. And as I said earlier, uh, the activated carbon is obviously new. Uh, that sponge up there is relatively new, but none of it has been in an aquarium anytime uh, recently. And uh, all that goes for the gravel and the lava rock too. So there you go, there's a the gravel and lava rock in place. Uh, that chamber, as I said, in the long run is just going to sit in there. Uh, this is the carbon. I am going to rinse the carbon before I uh, put it into that aquarium because I don't want to have that extra effect of having... Uh, the small particle carbon floating around because that will possibly alter this a little bit so I'm going to rinse that and then the rest of the course is just sticking in the aquarium. So there you go, that is all set and ready to go. I really like how this filter turned out. I think it's going to be a real asset in the fish room and keep in mind that is exactly where I plan on using this. I think that extra chamber is uh, going to be really handy for uh, certain types of things I have coming up and uh, we'll see how it is for maintenance in the long run, which is uh, also very important. So all that's left now is I'm going to put this in an aquarium and we're going to get some initial readings. And as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. Please leave comments. I really enjoy them. It is uh, one of the highlights of doing this. And uh, lots of interesting ideas get bounced back and forth. And I think it leads to an awful lot of interesting things. And of course... It is the best way for you guys to put input in this and to have uh, your ideas. Speaking of which, uh, I do have lots of things planned for this. But first, these are the results from 16 and 24 hours. Now, as you can see, there is no real change. The carbon isn't doing anything as far as the ammonium chloride is concerned. I am going to let this run for four days, just to have it as a comparison to... Uh, the other tests and then I'm going to move on to as I said a few seconds ago uh, to the other ones I want to retest the underground filter and that's really important because that was a very odd result and then I want to get down to a bunch of your other ideas uh, there's a bunch of stuff there I am NOT going to keep doing uh, this particular style of video every time I am going to try and spread it out a little bit give you some variety um, but I am going to start working on this and go over as many things as I can. But there are about three to four days on average between each uh, test anyway. So, uh, but probably every couple of weeks, uh, hopefully I'll have one of these videos and uh, we'll continue doing this until you guys either lose interest in it or we finally put this uh, to at least some form of consistency so we know uh, what's going on and it makes more sense. So there you go. 
that's the plan and again you guys are in control if you have other ideas please leave them below and we'll get onto that as well so thank you again thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next video and bye for now